So like we uh, developed these equations based on the voltage and the current analogs that we developed for T-lines, uh, we can use the other properties of T-lines to apply them to E-field and H-field propagation. And uh, what you may remember is that, uh, or one of the things you may remember is that there's a quantity that defines the attenuation of voltage and current waves as they move through the lossy line, and that determined what this alpha was and what this beta was. And uh, that was called the complex, complex propagation constant, um, and it was equal to uh, alpha plus J beta. The same constant can be applied to... Um, electromagnetic plane waves, and in class how we calculated that was we said that gamma is equal to the square root of R prime plus J omega L prime times G prime plus J omega C prime. We used the distributed parameter models, and this was a special case of T-line. And uh, a similar quantity, or actually the same quantity, exists for plane wave traveling in any medium. And that is that the uh, complex propagation constant for a plane wave is equal to uh, j, the imaginary number, times the frequency, uh, angular frequency, times the uh, magnetic permeability of the material, uh, times the quantity conductivity of the material plus j omega, so square root of negative one times angular frequency, times the electric permittivity of the material. And this is the general case of the complex propagation constant. Uh, there was a second parameter that we used to characterize T-lines, and we called that Z0, right, the, the uh, characteristic impedance. And that was equal to R prime plus J omega L prime over G prime plus J omega C prime. And uh, we said that the characteristic impedance is equal to the ratio of V bar plus to I bar plus, the forward traveling voltage component to the forward traveling current component. And we said that's also equal to the opposite of the reverse traveling voltage component to the reverse traveling current component. So this was, again, a special case of the T-line. A similar quantity exists for um, any medium and for a general plane wave. Instead of using Z0, we used that because it was a T-line. We use a new symbol, eta. It kind of looks like a little cursive N. And we define eta as the ratio of the forward traveling component of the E field to the forward traveling component of the H field. That's also equal to minus E bar minus over H bar minus. And that, not too surprisingly, is going to be equal to J omega U, J omega mu, excuse me, divided by sigma plus J omega epsilon. And uh, it's also measured in ohms, just like characteristic impedance was. And this new quantity here is called the intrinsic impedance. So most often we'll use the intrinsic impedance to relate the amplitude of the E fields and the H fields. And um, notice that, you know, like the propagation constant, it's calculated both based on operating frequency and on material properties of the substance or material that the plane wave is propagating in. So um, we've already said that in... In our language, we've already said that the direction of propagation of a plane wave, it's in the same direction as the cross product of E and H. And uh, now we know that the relationship between the magnitudes of, or, of the E field and the H field is related by this quantity uh, eta. We can now write equations that relate the E field and the H field in any point in space. And those, these are very fundamental. The H field is equal to 1 over eta A hat rho, and A hat rho is just the direction of propagation of the plane wave, crossed with the E field. And the E field, if we were to re-manipulate that, it's going to be minus eta A hat rho crossed with the H field. And these are very fundamental. So make sure you have that, that, and that written down, as well as the uh, general plane wave equations. 
And those one, two, three, four, five, six equations um, really govern all plane wave motion and characteristics.